71 Bitbird Ground, Texas runway 24, wind 260 at 16 gust 26, snow showers reported east of the field, runway surface condition is wet. Request release, Eagle 412 F-15s, cut off one departure. thousand people working together playing together socializing together uh, striving for a particular goal Today should be best I hope not. I don't like working 14 hours. Dear yeah, Father, we thank you for the food we're about to receive, for the nourishment our bodies for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Now yeah, go. Listen. What time did you say you were going to be home tonight? I'll be about a half hour late. And I just want to need some lipstick on me for the guy to see when I fall in for your grandma. <laughs> I got to go. It's late. I'm serious. Late, 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 late. Have a good day. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye. My name is Greg Clausen. The guys in my squadron call me Claw. There are 7,000 of us living here at Bitburg, 3,000 working for the military, the rest military wives, husbands, and children. Howdy. It's fine. Thank you very much. Have okay. a nice day. Have a good day. We're all here for a purpose. It's called the mission. My part of that mission is to fly McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle. Bitburg's mission is to ensure air superiority in our sector of Germany as part of NATO. And we're part of the Air Force's overall mission which together with other U.S. and allied military services is to discourage the other guy from trying anything. That's a pretty big job and a pretty important one, I think. Gene, what'd you find on this thing on that uh, RT? Uh, it got a broken connector. You have to replace it before we can get it up. He'll probably spare out this airplane. When he comes back, we've got a hydraulic switching belt check on it. You want to make sure we, uh, we get that knocked out? 
Okay. Make That's all you had, y'all, got for today? Yeah. They're giving us about an eight-hour e-tech on it, so we'll need everybody together to help put that thing on when we get it back up here. Well, I can go ahead and grab a tow crew and get it pushed back in the tab V and yeah. start getting the panels down. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Gene, you got anything else you want to bring up to these guys? What we need to do is we need to get this one back inside because of the, the weather. It's going to start to snow a little bit. So let's, let's get on this one first, and then everybody else get to their jobs, and uh, let's get the rest of it done. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. As long as they're not going to take me out for the weather. Our, uh, There's a 500 foot deck and an 800 foot deck, and uh, they expect to stay here. So. The business is good. Do I have a, a weather backup right, right here? You're looking at it. Hi! I need a toolbox. Go hire you. It takes a lot of tools to do my job, you know. I'm a hydraulic specialist. Bubble chasers, they call us. And I mean, it's, it's complicated. Not like some kind of secretary job or anything like that. And there's a lot of us doing it, so there's an awful lot of toolboxes back there. Yeah, here I come. Oh, and Jesus, each of them weighs a ton. How's the plane? Oh, uh, come on, it's fine. The plane I work on is an F-15 Eagle. It's my baby. And I got to work on it to get everything just right. Perfect, in fact. So it's all ready when the pilot comes out to fly it. Those are two of the pieces that we removed. There's no such thing as carelessness, I'll tell you that. There's one discrepancy. Now, if that clamp broke in flight, this line could bump up against anything and break, chip, you know, and that would be a problem. So. Hey, you guys ready to go kill him? I have three zero and ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, hack. Okay, let's go with the lineup card. It's on the board. Uh, Talon three one's a call sign. We'll get to the jets at ten o'clock. Like to start engines at ten twenty. Please let me know ahead of time if you have any problems on uh, you know, balls. Which is two eighty six nine Tiger Rock. Ceiling is uh, Stratus at fifteen hundred. Visibility is four in uh, rain showers. We got winds uh, out of the west, 26010, yeah. gusts 24, yeah. and altimeter 2955. When you get out to your airplane, make sure you double check, the, make sure everything's ready. Uh, the maintenance guys tell me that the TCTO they've been working on, which is the tech order compliance, so they've got to make some changes to the airplane. They are moving smartly along, but your airplane is one that they might be working this morning. So double check the panels are all buttoned up and that the maintenance guys have all uh, left the airplane available for you. I know they've been working all night on uh, getting it ready. Okay, as we said, we'll be a three-ship. Make sure that uh, we get out to the airplanes in a timely fashion. Razor, I understand yours has a uh, radar problem, so we want to pursue that. Job control tells me that they will be swinging the whole package out, so uh, double-check, make sure you got a good radar. 
I would like to, since we're emphasizing radar search and source techniques, uh, make sure you do have a good uh, package before you go out. When the air crew comes to the airplane in the morning, we try to have the airplane and ready for him to climb in the cockpit and take off uh, as near perfect as we can make it. This should be coming from your aircraft relays. Yeah, it goes back yeah. through relays in here. Mm -hmm. It's your holding circuit right here. We're at the point now when you start from point A again. Shoot the wires all the way down, all the way through, and find out. Because we've changed that whole secondary fire system. What I can't understand is... Uh, why the, why the analyzer, if it found this problem that the decoupler changed last night, why it wasn't used earlier in the week? I and mean, this is a week-long problem. See, well, what we're last doing here is we're fighting against each other. What we should do is say, hey, it could be this, it could okay, be this. Okay, we know, right. the we know we're not we getting do, power down to that switch right now, right? That's what was determined last night with the SCS this morning by Grave Shift, and it was done twice. Okay, so that gives you a place to start, yeah, right? Yeah, I'll check for power. If I don't got it, I'll just I'll shoot every wire. I have to tear the plane apart to do it. What would happen if you guys and Avionics screwed up? <laughs> you don't screw up. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. It won't go out of here if screwed up, I'll tell you that. Everybody understand what I'm simulating here? I want to make sure that we understand, in this case, you're going to have to use, you're uh, perfectly free to use anything on the radar you want. We're going to look for short range pickup, and what we really want to emphasize is initial moves to get the, ban the nose pointed toward the bandit, kill him as quickly as possible, get back together for visual mutual support, and resume our cat. Don't assume there's just two of us. Get in quick, get your kills, and get out, because as soon as we see you, we probably now it's two versus one, we're probably going to give you a hard time. What I'd like to do is engage the bandit, if time permits, go into a pincer-type maneuver. If he chooses this guy, he sets this one up. You roll in on his stern and shoot him. Say, where are they putting those missiles? In? Okay, the missiles will be now on the left hand side. Make sure that you have plenty of clearance with your, with your horizontal stab before you let them back into the tab B. Now, remember on the departure, uh, the new scramble departure, you're not limited anymore to the, uh, to the uh, nice old lady Shondell. What we'll be looking for is basically pull at the end of the runway, and we want to do a Shondell. And we're talking about a standard 60 to 70 degrees of bank. I'll be flying at 350, and I'll accelerate to 450 on the straight leg. So as you do your pull, make sure that you're looking for me, but don't get mesmerized by it. Okay, I'm high, and I'm looking through you. And yeah, two. you got it. Okay, my first job will be uh, probably to say, call the bandit position. I'm going to go hard into the bandit, and I'm going to try and give you position calls to get your eyes talked onto the bandit. Okay. okay, I'm going to call engaged, and at that point, I'm going to continue giving you uh, position calls. I'm going to maneuver to try and come in on the bandit and then uh, maneuver up to try and, and uh, get in a, a position of advantage on the bandit until you get your eyes on him too. Okay. There's a, a lot of a lot of man hours put in to, to keep one of these airplanes in the air, uh, in the cold, and uh, under quite adverse conditions. The pilots realize what the, what the uh, maintenance people are going through out here. I think the unsung heroes of every airplane that takes off is the maintenance man. It's the young kid right out of high school that's in there busting his knuckles every day, making the airplane safe for the pilots to fly. Because when we go to an airplane, we're betting our life on the airplane. And we take the responsibility, you know, of checking over ourselves. But that crew chief has been there hours and hours before we ever come into work. They work under austere conditions. They don't get paid a lot of money. And yet they'll work on those airplanes until their hands are bloody or until the airplane's fixed. Uh, I feel good when I know that my team has done it, uh, when I've directed them into, you know, to a good mission. Come back and everything's turned out, and uh, we get a thumbs up from the people up in charge, you know. The, feel, the feeling uh, that you're accomplishing something is the biggest thing, you know, if uh, everybody's working together. Um, you know, it takes, it takes the crew chiefs for crewing the airplane, it takes our weapons load crews to, you know, put the airplanes up, the missile delivery people. I've been kicking around on this flight line out here for 19 years. You don't do that without carrying some. We just launched our last three out there now. We got uh, one more going to be going here shortly. This one down, Ernie? I think when you look at the maintenance man, you see a perfectionist, a guy who's given a giant, complex, inanimate object to take care of and then breathes a personality into it that he knows its faults, its good points, its bad points, its little quirks and is willing to spend the time with it, working and tweaking it up a little bit, and making it just that little bit better so that when the pilot comes, he can walk up to an airplane and say, hey, Chief, how's it today? Chief's going to say, hey, it's terrific. I'm the last, I'm the first and the last guy. His life 
is in my hands, so to speak. If my plane is unfit to fly, I'll tell him it's unfit to fly. Because if anything happens to that plane and he doesn't come back, I feel responsible. The result, the result, the result of it is, is closeness. You know, it, it, it's closeness. You know, you, you, you get together and uh, you, you, you complain and you laugh together and you, and you say, I, I should be glad when my tour is over. But many who have left here, when they got ready to leave here, uh, you saw tears in the eyes. And, and you know deep down within, hey, they really didn't want to go. Okay, see you out there. Morning, Sergeant Dew. How you doing, sir? Just fine, how are you? Good. Good. How's the airplane? Good. Has it flown yet today? Okay. When I get into the airplane, I know I'm going to be doing my job, and I also know that other people have done their job. So that really, when I go out there, as I do my walk around inspection, I'm checking pretty uh, superfluous type items, things on the exterior that show up well. There's no way I can pull panels out and check and make sure that the guys that were checking wing attach bolts did their job. I just know that they did it. Uh, I have that kind of trust in them that, that they're a professional, they're going to do their job just as I'm going to do mine. Okay, it's going to be a uh, .9 sortie. We're just going to go out three ship. I promise not to break it for you. That's right. F-15s take off. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm 18 years in the service and I'm just like a little kid who's never seen an airplane fly before. It, it just gives me a sense of pride that, hey, uh, this section and, and, and this place here has, has done their job. And uh, yeah, I get goosebumps. Bipper ground taxi runway 24, the wind 260 at 16 gust 26, the altitude 3010. Bitburg weather is high above. This is the best fighting airplane ever built, and it's the best in the world right now. And I'm a lucky guy to be able to fly it. There's nothing that can touch it. It's got a set of engines that won't quit. It's got an airframe that won't quit. And it's got the, the radar in the nose. And you put those three things together, and you're looking at a pretty deadly fighting machine. When, uh, when you get out to the end of the runway, your body starts to tune up. You know, your, your uh, time slows down. You get into a time compression. Things start happening. Uh, you start to shed, shed a lot of things back behind you. Uh, and all you're focused on is the coming hour, what you briefed in the mission. And, uh, and everything else, you know, problems balancing your checkbook, whatever other, everything else is gone. Lead takes off. And you see him hold it down on the runway, build up his airspeed. He gets to the end of the runway and you see it looks impossible, this plane's going straight up. And you realize that in 10 seconds I'm going to be there doing the same thing. When you get the gear and flaps up, you're following him right along. And uh, he is two miles above you. You go, I'm going to be up there. 
pull your nose straight up and the, the world is just a flat plate below you. You're pointed straight up and you can actually see it sinking away as if you're in a rocket going up. And your lead is starting to roll out to level. Then you climb up and you roll out level. And uh, all of a sudden, you're 10,000 feet above everything else. As good as our plane is, as good as we are, we don't own the air. We have the Warsaw Pact nations confronting us on the other side of the border and they have five times the jet fighters we do. That means we'd better be at least five times as good. Not just the planes and the pilots, but everybody. Are we that good? Damn, I think so. But being that good doesn't mean I'm relaxed. Because up there, you're essentially alone. I can tell you that everyone who goes into air-to-air -air combat feels fear. Everyone. fighters today is probably the purest form of combat and that I realize that when I enter the aerial arena that regardless uh, of the odds that there's a fairly good chance that it will all boil down to uh, me and my airplane against an opponent and his airplane and that only one of us will leave the fight uh, the opportunities to for both of us to get away will probably be remote uh, so I have to be ready when I go in uh, mentally and physically to know that if I don't win this fight there may not be any others to follow but it's a physical task as well because it's a strenuous uh, occupation when uh, you engage in an aerial battle that lasts seven to eight minutes at which time during the battle you may from ten to twenty times pull uh, seven uh, G's or so okay let, let's say it was sitting in the cockpit now and I'm up here flying along I've got the stick here and my throttles or over here. So now I'm starting to really get into a fight and I'm pulling G's and turning the aircraft. Well what happens is as you pull G's you've really got to sit up straight because your head weighs an awful lot. So what we wind up doing when we're pulling G's and we've got our tunnel vision problem and we've lost our peripheral vision is you wind up having to turn around and you talk about an uncomfortable painful thing that you really got to do is here you are pulling the airplane and turning and now you got to keep sitting straight and you sort of push yourself around keeping your head balanced almost and look behind you and nine times out of ten just when you think you've got the whole world you know I'm gonna kill this guy you look right there oh there's another guy coming in on you so now you gotta break off your attack and defend yourself okay I got it 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 I got
Five men coming down now at eight miles, 17,020 right now. How about your uh, right, uh, 330 high? In an air combat, it's like a chess game. Every move has a counter move. And it's not so much as making the right moves, it's making the least mistakes. A lot of the inflection in the voice, you know, you start getting really excited, a guy comes in on you, you're telling your wingman to break, you're trying to think fast, talk fast, you're dealing in, you know, parts of seconds rather than in minutes and half hours, and uh, you try and do an awful lot in a small amount of time. And, you know. Nobody likes to get shot because you know that except for just being just a training scenario, the mistakes that you make in this thing are the mistakes that, you know, you could make on a real life mission. And instead of just being uh, called a kill, you'd probably be killed. Uh, well, you just call a shot. Yeah, I called a shot right at the time I got the fever, but we'll continue, so. Okay, can I meet in my birth or head to head? Let's bug out north. We're going to right now, Heels. How are you doing, cat? Uh, say again, Heels. I believe anybody that's been in combat uh, will be only more than happy to tell you that he probably does not want to go through the experience again because it's a very painful experience. Uh, the fear you learn to live with, but you never learn to live with losing close friends and uh, by the nature of the beast that occurs quite frequently. So I can say that I do not uh, actively uh, hope that we have another conflict, but nevertheless my job is to prepare for one. Uh, and if I look at uh, the current uh, world situation and assess that there will be no conflicts in the future, then really there is not much meaning to my job. So I have to be ready to go fight, uh, and if I'm called upon, of course, I'll be the first uh, one to volunteer to go because that's essentially what my mission is. But to uh, desire it, I think, is, is something that's far different, and I don't believe that people that have been there before are ex very eager to face that type of situation again. With most of the pilots here having been through Vietnam, they know what it means to go to combat in the air, what it means to lose friends, what it means to have to go visit a friend's wife and say he was really great but he's not coming home. So I hate war. I've been there. I don't want to go back, but somebody has to do it. And I'm ready. You know, my dad told me something once that was, and I still remember it quite vividly, is uh, I fought in a war so that you wouldn't have to. Uh, it's a continuing thing. We keep doing it because we keep hoping someplace down the road somebody will not have to do it. It hasn't worked yet. We've always been involved in some skirmish or someplace, so uh, to say that there won't be a war or there will be a war, I think is, is kind of uh, up in the air. We don't really know. Uh, but I will say this, if it happens and we have to fight in it, I'll be there. You come back from mission, your hair is all knotted up from you know wearing the helmet, and you probably sweat and everything. But uh, that, that, that's just the outward sign. Everything on the inside. If the mission went good, you feel great because you know that you uh, threw yourself up against the challenge and you did good.
when you finally get your plane back to the Tab V, the hangar, there they are, the maintenance crew, the people who make sure it flies. And they baby that bird like a pit crew at the Indianapolis 500, getting it ready for the next time, tomorrow maybe. I want you back inside and I'll check the aircraft. As good as I think I am, it's the plane that gets the job done. And they're the ones who take care of that. In a way, they're up there with me. And I can't tell you the feeling of confidence that gives me. Okay, I gotta get the no accelerometer readings together. Okay, that does it. Okay, down to one. Looking for spaceships. Your beer? You're probably drinking. Oh, kill! Get out of the way. Okay, you got. There. Okay. I thought we had to get ready. Dugan is up. Yeah, a lot of points on this one. Yeah, shoot for all the big ones, Dugan. They're the rocks. They're the rocks, Dugan. You gotta shoot the rocks, not the blank spaces. Well, 830 points. I'm really racking it up. You know, sometimes people ask me, and sometimes I ask myself, why have you stayed in? with the long hours and so-so living conditions. Well, it sure hasn't been because of the pay, because I could make a lot more in civilian life. In fact, the pay's been so low, it's a little hard to put up with. But I have stayed in. Why? Well, first there's the flying. <laughs> I love that. But also, I've stayed in because there's a special feeling here. It's hard to put into words but everybody here feels it. We spend an awful lot of time together, not just at work. You know, sitting around, shooting the ball, going to the movies, ball and eating out, getting a little rowdy once in a while. We're going to show one of the acts from the, the show. I'm going to tell you what, one of the acts. You ready? The other day, we, we all got together and put on a big floor show to raise some money. And we had it recorded on videotape. We sat around the other night watching it, and it was as much fun watching it as it was putting it together. I don't think that our society can compare to the, quote, outside world, as, it, as we call it, because you don't have the closeness uh, in a business that you have here where people's lives are at stake. And people don't take care of each other as much outside. The society seems to be drifting away from it, and we seem to be drifting more and more towards it. Here, everybody kind of looks out for everybody else. I guess you'd kind of call it a buddy system. You watch out for your buddy, and hopefully your buddy watches out for you. It's like people help people here, and some of them are, you know, they for real, they can, you know, it's like home, brothers and sisters, everybody. Uh, the girls in the dorm, all of them are kind of close. The guys in the dorm, everybody tries to help each other. If you need a ride somewhere, they're there. If you need a ride home, they're there, you know. When it comes down to alerts and when everybody has to you know, really see what each other's made of, we do all right. Everyone works together, especially in the fire department. Everybody, you know, we just treat each other. It's more like a big family around here, and I think it's pretty good. In fact, this is the nicest place I've ever been where everybody was like that. I'm a teacher here, and I've taught in the cities, and I've taught in the suburbs. And let me tell you, this school's different. It's, um... Well, I don't know. I guess you'd say we're pretty close here. Okay, Amy. 
all the kids know each other, and they know their moms, and they know their dads. That makes this place special. That's what a housing project is, a bunch of apartments. You know, I'd say together. our kids really care about each other. Now we know what we're going to do for science. We gather food and books and gyms. The teenagers, I made the kids my responsibility here. What I'm doing now is rehearsing a concert we're putting on. It's just one of the things this youth group does. We also put on plays and shows and even athletic events. Okay, let's have the lights up there. You got them? Hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me. Well, I teach all these kids about lighting. I teach them about sound. For the kids, it's marvelous. It's amazing. So it's, you, when you see the look in the kids' eyes. Okay, come on, let's get it now. There's something happening with these kids. They're on fire. They're happy. They get, they get exhausted. We don't have long rehearsals, but in one hour and a half, they're dead. They're out on their feet. Good. Now, this is, this is Thursday. We got one more day. We got to work very hard. On the count. I'll count. One, two, three. What? Get it. No, no, the rules are still the same, Cece. You have to shoot the basketball. I got it. Well, work certainly isn't all that I do on the base. I like to pal around with my friends and get into some basketball. I'm getting pretty good at it, too. Whoa! Right. I, I was born in the, the ghettos of Mississippi in Gulfport, and uh, all I could have probably expected was... Uh, maybe working on the docks or, or a nice janitorial job somewhere uh, supporting a family. need to know if you can help us find a cannon plug stock. Here, I'm a part of something. And I'm a professional. I'm respected, even appreciated, for what I do. And as far as I'm concerned, I think this is about as good as you're going to get it. The people who live in New York City or something like that, they always seem to be there stationary, but yet they don't know the people across the street. They, they don't know who lives down the road. They don't know who's running the store that they always go to. Well, we're only here a short time, but I think we know more about the people around us than anybody anyplace else. It's not that we're forced into it. It's that we want to. We have plenty of tension in our job, so we let off steam whenever we have the chance. And when one of our guys comes in after his last flight, before he moves on to another base, we hold a little ceremony called hosing down. This time, the uh, victim is Sundance. A good guy, a great pilot, and a good sport. We'll miss him. Let me out now. Can we do this for each guy that leaves? So uh, I think that can vouch for the camaraderie we have. And all I can say is it sure is cold out here. When somebody's sick, Hey, can I go to the commissary for you? Uh, how about if I do you shopping for you today? That's the kind of uh, community relations that we have, uh, I think, throughout the community. And it's, it's more so than you'll find on the outside, I think. Uh, I, I go to the big cities back in the States. Uh, we travel around. We see these sort of things, you know, and it's, it's different. How are you? How are you? Good. I haven't seen you in a long time. What you been doing? Well, I've been TDY quite a bit. Oh, yeah? Where'd you go? Uh, go to Italy. Hey, over. And you didn't bring me no souvenir? Uh, I have never lived in a community where people take care of each other as uh, much as they do in the military. And that goes for uh, from the one striper right up to the four star. If there's something that needs to be done, I can guarantee you the military family will do it. I know she's excited. I bet you are too. Is it really? <laughs> what room is she in? You Having a baby is really know. something, especially here. When we had Jennifer, everybody showed up. The base hospital just couldn't handle it all. There's your baby. Yeah. And you get the mom and dad here. It was really a show. I had to bring my friends in in shifts. Perfect. She's the most beautiful baby I've ever seen in my life. That's the way it is around here. Come on, baby. That's right. For you and your baby. Thank you. Oh, you guys, it's really a relief to see some good friends. It's it's hard to explain. Uh, hard to put into words. 
what the feeling is about people that care for each other and care for for seeing that a job gets done despite lousy weather cold damp conditions frequently in the winter time uh, working weekends and uh, night but they see it as a as something that that's important that is satisfying and uh, and they know that if anything goes wrong, somebody's going to help them out. I tell you, the driver got a work cut out for tonight. The chili brigade. That's what they call us. Come on in here and get some chili. Come on in. Ever so often, we get together and bring the night shift out a little treat. Here's chili. I don't think it would matter what we brought. Cookies, chili, whatever. They're always glad to see us. And that makes me feel like I'm doing something to help out. Thank you. You know, you go on and on with the kinds of examples of people helping each other. And I guess that's what we call community or call uh, that, that ingredient that makes, that makes the Air Force a great place to be and a great place to work. feel that we're an exceptional group here or that this base is all that different from any other in any branch of the service we're just a collection of well Americans who by luck or fate or design have come together to work and have found something that everyone seems to be looking for these days now maybe it doesn't work for everyone but for a lot of us it does work it sure works for me it gives me a sense of purpose, a sense of belonging to something. I don't know how to describe it as a personal feeling, it's a feeling that I've done something. The guys I work with have done something. And it's a feeling of pride that we've got the best, we do the best. And these aircraft are the best. When you're on Zulu Alert, you sit there playing cards, watching TV, looking like you're relaxing, but you're really not. You're waiting for that klaxon to sound. You're waiting for, well, you never know what. And you're thinking. You're thinking about your wife and your kids, about your closest friends, about the people at the base, about this community you're part of. You're thinking about your folks back home, all the people back there and everyone else who's dependent on you, even if they don't know it. Then the klaxon sounds, and when it sounds, all that thinking reminds you of why you leap to your feet and get to that plane to get it airborne as fast as you can. You hope this is just another practice and not the real thing. Because sure as hell you don't want to lose any of those things you've been thinking about. That's why you practice. And practice till you're part of the plane and the plane is part of you. Because you know the best way to make sure a war never happens is to let the other guy know without a doubt that if he tries anything, he's up against the best. <laughs> 